Hi guys, so in today's video, we're going to discuss about um, two uh, famous web fuzzers, um, WFuzz and uh, FFuzz. And the main goal of today will be to determine uh, which one is uh, the faster um, and uh, basically just how to show you uh, how to use them. Uh, it's really basic, nothing really complicated, uh, no need to spend like, I don't know, like 40 minutes on that. Um, just in 10 minutes, it should be it should be good for you to uh, get all the basics and also uh, get an idea of how you can uh, monitor and determine uh, the, the the speed of a fuzzer like uh, this one. So the first one will be uh, WFuzz, uh, and as I mentioned, the second one will be FFuzz. That's the two most famous. Uh, web feather available uh, and uh, if I remember they are both also available directly in the uh, Kali Linux uh, distribution so uh, that's also why a lot of people are uh, using them. So in order to do the, the testing uh, of today uh, we're gonna need a multiple stuff. The first thing we're gonna need is a really basic Python server uh, because we will need to do some modification and so on. So for that I've used this one um, that's uh, like one of the first results uh, that is uh, coming when we are looking for like a really basic, uh, simple HTTP server in Python. So it's this one. Um, it's pretty nice. It's not really complicated. I can just uh, tell you uh, just uh, a quick description about that. But basically, it's really simple. Uh, we have the main. Uh, if you are providing an argument, you will need to provide like the port you, you want. Basically, it will uh, call the run function. This run function will uh, create a server that will serve forever. Um, nothing fancy there. This server will be uh, S. So it's this one. So it's we are deriving from the base HTTP request handler. Uh, we have a custom function uh, that is private. This one, the set response, and we are uh, overwriting the do get and do post of methods that are um, basically famous method used by uh, base HTTP request handler. And basically we are putting whatever we want uh, right there. So if we are doing the get uh, request or post request, uh, you will uh, always get the uh, 200 response right there. Uh, nothing really complicated and we are doing some logging uh, information uh, and if we are doing a post uh, we can see that uh, we are looking for the content length and and so on um, by the way um, I, I will let you five seconds you can put the video in in pause um, can you tell me where the vulnerability in this server is because there is a vulnerability in this server so let me just uh, yeah right there you should see the, see, see it so um, please put in pause, try to find the vulnerability, uh, and right now I will tell you the, the answer. So um, for those who find it, right there, there is a vulnerability because we are uh, looking for the content length. So first of all, we are not checking if the uh, this header uh, exists. It should exist, but you can still create some uh, custom um, HTTP request that doesn't contain it, basically. And we are uh, trying to con uh, con convert that into uh, an integer. Uh, and in the same way, if you are not providing, uh, if you are only providing number, it will be okay. But if you are providing like um, like some some string uh, A B C, uh, basically this stuff will uh, trigger uh, an exception. Um, it will not crash the server. I think uh, mainly because uh, the HTTP D uh, serve forever. I think will handle the stuff properly. Uh, it will catch the exception and so on. So you will maybe not crash the server, but at least you can maybe do like some kind of denial of service if you are doing like a lot of requests and so on. But um, yeah, that's just the funny part that this piece of code that is seems to be the first result when you are looking for that is actually vulnerable to uh, something. So I will uh, let you uh, play with that and maybe try to, to exploit that. But that's uh, another uh, story, basically. So the main idea, we have this uh, server. And the main goal for us will be to use both um, WFuzz and uh, FF uh, in order to uh, uh, compare the, the result. So um, we can actually do that right now. So we are launching the server. And if we are running a WFuzz, um, with this specific command, 
we're gonna see the result. So WFS is really simple to install. I will let you do that. You can. It's basically written in Python, um, and the release, release uh, first release is from 2014. So it's it's a bit old. It's it was one of the first one. And basically, uh, I will invite you to clone the repository because there is some uh, word list directly inside, and we're gonna need it. So the simple command will be this one, wfuzz dash w, and you are providing the word list. And then you are providing the um, URL that uh, you want to fuzz. In that case, uh, we are doing everything locally, uh, so localhost 8080. And uh, the fuzz keyword will be replaced by the, uh, by the different uh, content of this command.txt. So you can also take a quick look, general, command.txt, this one. And as you can see, there is multiple value right there. So uh, there is uh, yeah, 951 uh, value. So that's all the most common one uh, that you will uh, maybe uh, have to, to deal with. So we are taking that and we're gonna run it right now. As you can see, we are getting a lot of 200. As I mentioned, the server will answer 200 all the time and uh, for all those requests, we are getting the, the stuff proper, we are getting some logging information. Uh, so in that case, we are getting uh, get A, get 3, get whatever, get welcome, and so on. So everything should be, uh, seems to be working properly. We don't have really like a proper request per second information. So that's, uh, that's a bit bad. Uh, I don't know why. I suppose it's um, maybe it was too fast, uh, but we, we're going to see that uh, right after. Let me just rerun the further. And right now we're going to do the same stuff with uh, FF. So FF is written in Go, uh, and the first release was in 2018, uh, a bit more recent. And since it's written in Go, maybe we will get some different results. So um, for the simple command line, FF W, the word list. Um, and then dash u, the URL, and uh, yeah, as you can see, it's really similar. Nothing really fancy in that case. We are running the stuff, uh, and uh, we are still getting answer, uh, and so on. Everything seems to be fine. We are actually getting some requests per second, but yeah, uh, again, um, totally at the end, we, we are getting some, some information, especially, I think it will be more clear if we are running that again. So we are getting for which... Um, key, uh, keyword, which word, and the status, and the size, and so on, and at the end, we are getting like the, the complete progress. Uh, bad part, we don't have the total uh, number of requests per second, so that's uh, that's a bit sad. Um, so as you can see, for both tools, we are not really able to determine uh, which one is the faster, um, and um, that's... Um, uh, that's a bit problematic if you want to choose one against uh, uh, another. Um, I will say that because basically, I mean, in terms of feature, it's really similar. Um, also, something I want to mention, um, for me, so they are calling themselves as further. Um, I mean, it's a bit borderline, I would say. Uh, for me, it looks more like some brute forcer and some stuff like that. Uh, the main reason is um, there is Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I think for both tools, there is no way to uh, ask to, to have like pure random or pseudo random uh, generation. You will maybe uh, only, you will on, always need to specify some kind of word list um, and uh, it will not be possible to basically say, okay, just generate me like a string and provide that um, basically randomly. And in the same way, it seems that always you will need to provide that in the URL and it's not possible maybe to attack directly the server like what I mentioned, like the content length. Uh, it's going to be complicated for you to uh, use those tools uh, if you want to fuzz only like a specific value from this header. So in the same way, or maybe they are limiting the stuff, maybe you will be able to do that only in the cookie and so on. But it's going to be, um, it's not as modulable that it could be and in terms of generation and randomness um, it's not really like uh, like what we have usually called uh, a further um, so that just to to mention that uh, the good part is we have um, those who are taking in consideration the feedback 
so the, re the response of the server, so that's really nice. And uh, that could be uh, really interesting uh, to for us to, to determine if something wrong uh, is happening. So let's go back uh, on that. So as you can see, uh, in both cases, we it was not possible for us to monitor the execution speed. Uh, so um, the main goal for us right now will be to modify the server in order to monitor the execution bit, uh, speed, but on the server side. So for that, I uh, create this tiny server. I modified the server. Basically, I've just added um, the import to time. I added a counter and a start uh, that will be uh, global. And basically, those two variables right there. Uh, so once we are calling this function set response, we're going to increment the counter. Is, if the counter is one, we are starting the time. That means we are getting the first request that is coming to the server. And if the counter is uh, 45,000, you will see why I'm taking this number specifically. Uh, it's the end of the, the, the monitoring for us, and we are calculating the uh, elapsed amount of time, amount of second, and we are getting, uh, as an information, how many requests per second have been uh, processed. Uh, the reason I'm choosing this uh, size is because uh, we're going to send this amount of requests. And the reason for that is uh, there is a huge uh, dictionary, a huge, a huge word list right there, Megabist. Uh, and actually, this one contains uh, 45,000 uh, um, keywords. So uh, that will be interesting. We're going to use this one. Uh, the main reason is if I'm only providing, I don't know, like 1,000 files, um, it will be done in less than a second, and we will not get like a proper um, score. Even right now with 45,000 um, inputs, um, we will maybe do that in what, 6 to 10 seconds. Um, and uh, it will not be the best. Ideally, you can it will be better to do that with like million um, and, and billion of requests to get like a proper um, idea of how many requests per second uh, in general you are able to get with those further. But I mean, it will be enough. It will already give us some uh, proper uh, result right now. So let's do it. So the, this new server uh, is called, um, let me, just put that right there. The name is um, server timing, this one. And we're going to run the um, the fuzzer. So we're going to run uh, wfuzz. Um, so we are using the megabist uh, dictionary, this one. So let's run it. We will get a lot of stuff. Uh, again, you can just um, prevent to have any uh, print uh, um, Basically, if you are um, like um, ignoring the 200 response, in that case, you will not get all those prints, but it will not impact the, uh, the request per second, basically, since we are monitoring that from the server side. Um, the good part, as you can see, is this time we are getting uh, a proper request per second uh, information right there. So 18 uh, seconds uh, and um, 45,000 requests. And we have, uh, as a request per second, from the further side, um, two, four, five, nine. Um, so two, yeah, two, four, five, nine. And on the other side, we have two, four, six, one. So uh, it's really similar. Um, also, something to mention is we are doing everything locally. So um, in terms of networking is we can say that it's the best, best case as possible, basically. Uh, the father is sending the request. It will be directly handled locally by my system that will directly forward the stuff uh, to, the, to the server. So uh, we will not get a lot of uh, loss in terms of uh, timing uh, from the networking side. It's not, uh, I would say that, that's, yeah, that's the best case as possible. It's not something you will get if you are attacking like a real server, um, um, I think. So basically, uh, from the server side and from the, the, the further side, we are getting something similar. Maybe I'm not counting exactly. Uh, if you remember, uh, basically, the server is doing uh, for this uh, specific counter and so on. So that's maybe why we don't have the, the exact result. But 
that's globally the same idea. We have like uh, 2,500 uh, exec per second um, in general with WFS. Let's do the exact same stuff with um, FF. So we gonna relaunch the server and with FF, we are running the stuff. And uh, at the end, uh, FF will not give us the request per second or it will give us something really uh, weird. Um, and uh, if we are taking a look at the on the server side, we have something like 6,000 execution per second. So as you can see, uh, we have like a factor 2, factor 3, or 2.5 um, compared to uh, WFUS. So that's really nice. And uh, FF in that case, and, and even in general, is uh, faster than uh, WFUS. So, um, the reason why uh, it's the case, uh, it's uh, actually really interesting and that's something you should consider when uh, right now you are writing your tools. Um, the main reason is because Python um, in terms of um, speed uh, is not as good as uh, Go uh, and Golang. Um, the main reason is Python is an interpreted language, meaning that uh, actually WFuzz is running inside uh, the Python interpreter. And on the other side, we have um, FF that is compiled. Uh, compiled. So um, it's way faster uh, because uh, we are taking from Go some Go Golang code. Uh, we are compiling that uh, into um, assembly, uh, and we will directly get the, the binary. So even if uh, actually inside the Go binary you have some additional stuff and so on. Um, basically, you will get a speed that uh, you will not get uh, compared to, uh, to WFUS. Uh, in addition to that, um, I think both are uh, running into like a, a single threaded mode. Um, it sh we should verify that, but uh, we can actually go even faster if we are running like multiple thread uh, to send the request. But in that case, uh, the limitation will maybe not be on the uh, generation from the, the binary, uh, but it could be on the network, uh, on the networking side. So not locally, but if you're targeting a server, it could be the it could be the case. So uh, I hope you uh, appreciate. Um, so as usual, you can directly uh, find all the source code and everything uh, on my. Um, on my website, on my uh, training platform, uh, and you will get all the all the code and, and so on. It's totally free, so I will uh, let you the, the link right below. Um, again, let me know what you would like to see uh, on the next video, uh, and uh, see you uh, next time. Bye.